welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how I made this little couch for my dog And here is my dog trying out his new couch. This couch is a perfect size for any small pet. Let's go ahead and get started. I made the frame of the couch using cardboard and here are the measurements that I used. To make the arms of the sofa I used these measurements and I used four of each piece. To make the back of the sofa I used these measurements and I used two of each piece. To make the seat of the sofa I used these measurements and I used two of each piece as well. Then I just used packing tape to assemble each part of the sofa like this. And I did this with all four of my boxes. Once I finished assembling each box, I like to go back and reinforce them with more tape. After I finished assembling each box, I taped them together to form my couch. Then I cut out four pieces of cardboard with these measurements to reinforce the inside of the couch. I just used white school glue to glue the pieces of cardboard down. After I finished gluing all the pieces down, I reinforced them with tape. Then I used this 1 inch foam that I bought at Walmart and I cut it to size. Then I began marking my foam where I was going to make my tufts. I made them 4 inches apart. Once I marked everything out, I began making the holes with my scissors. And I did the same thing to the arms of my sofa. Then I used my Gorilla Spray Adhesive to glue the back pieces of foam down. To cover my couch, I'm going to use this faux leather fabric that I bought at Walmart. I used a stapler to make the tufts. When you're tufting, you're going to want to cut your piece of fabric at least 4 inches bigger than the side you're going to be tufting. I like to use at least 2 staples for each tuft to form an X. After I finished tufting, I tucked down the excess fabric. And I like to add a few staples to secure it in place. And I stapled the top part down. Then I begin tufting the sides of the couch.
And this is how I looked once I finished tufting. Now I'm going to add the seat of the sofa. First I place down the fabric like this and staple it down on the back. Then I use my Gorilla Spray Adhesive to place down my foam. Then I just tuck down the excess fabric on the sides. and I staple the fabric down. After I finished covering up the front part of the couch, I covered the back. Now I'm going to cover up the edges. To cover up the edges of the sofa, I used foam board from Dollar Tree and I cut it down to these sizes. For the back part of the sofa, I used a long piece of fabric to cover up three of the foam board pieces. I just used hot glue to place my pieces down. I used a 17 inch foam board, a 30 inch foam board and another 17 inch foam board for this. You want to leave a little gap in between each foam board. Then I hot glue the edges of my fabric down. Once I was done, I just hot glued this to the back part of the sofa. and I stapled down the fabric to the bottom of the sofa. And I did the same thing to cover up the front edges of my sofa. And I just high glue that in place as well. And then I just stapled it down and I did the same thing to the other side of my sofa. I used these adhesive gemstones that I bought at Walmart to cover up my tufts. And I just used hot glue to put them in place. Then I used this decorative nail hat trim that I bought on Amazon. I'll be leaving a link for it in the description box below as well as a list of the rest of the materials used in this video. And you just place it down using these tacks it comes with. Then I just used my stapler to staple down the sides before placing the nail head trim. You want to make sure to put the staples in the same spot where you'll be putting the trim so that the trim can cover them up. I like to add the staples just to reinforce the edges. To cut my trim, I just bend it up and down until it snaps. I 
After I place down my trim, I like to use my hammer to push my tacks all the way down. And this is how the couch looked after I added the nail head trim. Now I'm going to be using these plastic cups that I bought at Dollar Tree as the legs for the sofa. I just used hot glue to glue them in place. I cut out two pieces of foam board that measure 16 by 17 inches to cover up the sides of my sofa. And I measured 3 inches all the way around to make a frame. Once I was done drawing out my frame, I made diagonal lines at the corners. And then I cut out my pieces using my X-Acto knife. And then I used this mirror reflective bino to cover up my pieces. This mirror reflective bino is from Amazon, I'll be leaving a link for it in the description box below. Then I removed the protective film and folded in the edges. And I did this for all 8 of my pieces. Then I used hot glue to put the pieces in place. Now I'm going to be using this folk art silver metallic paint that I bought at Walmart to paint the side of my couch. After my paint had dried, I used Mod Podge and this decorative filler that I bought at Michaels, also known as crushed glass, to decorate the side of my couch. I applied a generous layer of Mod Podge and then I applied the crushed glass. I let that dry and then I took off the excess. Then I applied another layer of Mod Posh to seal in my glass. And I let that dry. I also made a decorative dog bone pillow for the couch using this faux leather fabric that I bought at Walmart. I took a sheet of paper and I folded it in half and I cut out a template that I could use to make my pillow. Then I used this template to draw it on my fabric. And I cut that out leaving some extra fabric on the sides. And I used that as my template to cut another piece of fabric the exact same size. And then I begin to sew around the edges with my sewing machine. You want to leave a little gap so that you can flip your pillow inside out. After I flipped it over, I just stuffed it with polyfill. And then I just hand sewed the opening. And this is how my pillow ended up looking. Thank you so much for watching today's video.